Did you know you can use C Sharp in Power Automate? This right here is coded in C Sharp. This is the code. You don't need any special tools for this. You don't even need Azure. It deploys nicely. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I wrote this, how AI helped me, and all the limitations you have to be aware of before you start promising things. For this example, let's pretend I have a bunch of phone numbers in the system and they're not following a consistent format. What I wanna do is take these weird phone numbers and put them in a format that's the same always. I could do this in Power Automate, but it would really be a mess to maintain. But in C-sharp code, it's literally only two lines of code to do this. Let's build this now. We begin at make.powerapps.com and we come down here to an area that says custom connectors. If you don't see this, click on more. You can press discover all and in the search type in custom connectors and then they'll appear here. You can also pin it so it's always here. Once you've got those, click into custom connectors and come up here to the top right and click create from blank. Call it whatever suits you. I'm gonna call it Reg X Assistant. And let's pick a nice image because when we choose it later down here, we want it to really stand out. I'm gonna use ChatGPT to help. So draw me a nice Reg X icon that is a square. A little bizarre, but find something more professional. This will do. Under host, just type in home because it's not going to be a real API. Click on security. We can go with no authentication because again, this isn't exposing any data. Let's click definition. And then let's click on new action. Here's where we can make all kinds of different helper functions. For in this case, this one's gonna be called format phone number. And then you gotta give it a unique operation. And then under here, let's do import from sample. This is what information we pass into the function. So it's going to be a post. In here, just type in HTTP slash slash home ignore this and then down here the json i'm going to pass into it is just going to be the phone number and that's all you need click import and if you're ever like oh whoops i need more parameters here or i spelled phone number wrong you can come down here into edit and then go down and change it up to whatever you need to do i'm going to continue forward click to AI plugin. This doesn't apply to us. So I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom to code. Now, before you start writing code, make sure this actually works for you. I'm gonna come over here and click code enabled. And under the dropdown, I should see the action I made earlier. From here, I like to click create connector and make sure it works. Sometimes an error can appear here and you wanna figure out if you have the wrong privileges early on before you start adding a bunch of code and doing a lot of work. If all went well, come down here to test. You will need a new connection. Now here, this is making a personal connection. You really wanna be using connection references for this, but we'll come back to connection references later on. Let's click back, click on edit, and then under here, I'm just gonna skip all the way to the test step. I have my connection. We don't really need this yet. I'm just gonna click test operation, and we'll see that we got a response back, hello world, because that, is what our code was meant to do. In the custom connector documentation, it gives you some helpful code. Like here is the hello world one we just saw. Here's one for doing just basic regex operations. But here's a common mistake. If you wanna use these, don't just click copy and then come in here and override it. This totally won't work. The reason it'll break is because you need to make sure these wrap around the code. So you actually wanna paste it into the middle here if you're gonna do that. But we don't want this code. In fact, let's have ChatGPT help us. Write me a, that takes a phone number parameter and make sure it's the same one that you spelled it the same way here and uses regex to convert it to this format. Great, the operation ID is format phone number, you'll see why in a second. Here is some sample code to base off of. And then I come over here and I don't use this one because it's not accepting parameters. I'm just gonna steal this one, hit copy, come back here, paste it here, and then let's see what it gives us. Well, this is perfect. First, it checks if it's the format phone number method. For instance, if we make one that says format email, it's not gonna call this function. Next, it comes down here and takes the phone number from the 
request body, takes it out, and then what it does is it passes it to this format phone number method, which it has down here, which uses regex to put it in the format we want, and it added some helpful error handling. So I'm gonna copy all this code, swing back here into my actual code, paste it in the middle here, that's a key step, and then hit update connector. And let's test this by clicking on test, putting in a phone number, and then clicking test operation. And what we got is here's our original phone number and here is our nicely formatted one. Let's put this in Power Automate. Back in Power Automate, I have a flow here that has this really bad phone number and I wanna fix it using our new custom connector. So I'm gonna click add an action. Under runtime, let's filter down to only hours. Here's our regex assistant. We're gonna click on format phone number and then under here, pick body phone number. And then in here, let's go pass in the bad one from earlier. And then afterwards, let's go see the final result. So I'm gonna use a compose. And then inside of here, I'm gonna click the function expression. Let's go to dynamic content. And then from our phone number body, we're gonna select that new formatted phone number and if we forgot what the property is called, if we come down here, here it is, formatted phone number. I'm gonna select that, paste that into here, click add, and then hit save. And then if we hit test up here, it ran successfully, it called our custom connector, and then in the end, our result is a nicely formatted phone number. Some important things to keep in mind is if we click here under our connections, we should always be using connection references, not our own personal connection. Now, there are some big gotchas with custom connectors that you gotta know it before you start suggesting this. It has to be written in C sharp, kind of obvious. The next one is you're limited to five seconds. So if you're passing in large data counts that you wanna parse through, custom connectors might not work here. The other one is your file size can't be bigger than one MB, but if you're just using a few functions, it probably won't be too much of an issue. Namespaces, you can't use every library in C Sharp. Here's all the libraries you can use. Like you can use the libraries for JSON, you can use the libraries for text, and a link is a great one. But if you wanna use external NuGet packages, such as for reading PDFs or something, that's not supported here. And as of now, there's no tracing or logging it can give you as to why it failed. Now, copying and pasting code in here and just hoping it works isn't the best way to use C Sharp code. Ideally, you have your local debugging environment where you can nicely step through everything that's going on. If you're interested in setting this up, and you want to get better with custom connectors or any kind of best practice, check out our free solutions architect training. It's in the description below.